Nothing about Alaska's Resurrection Bay this time of year looks warm. And if someone said the icy water from Resurrection Bay could be used to heat the Alaska Sea Life Center, one of Seward's largest facilities, all winter long, well, you'd probably call that person crazy. Meet clean energy consultant Andy Baker. We'll tell you more about Andy in a minute. First, the Alaska Sea Life Center. It's Alaska's only public aquarium and ocean wildlife rescue center. From seabirds to sea lions, people come to learn and enjoy. Scientists come to study. With more than 80 year-round staff and 25 seasonal staff, it's Seward's largest private employer. Built in 1995, it's four stories tall and 120,000 square feet, a beast to keep warm in the chilly Alaska winter, to the tune of 500 gallons of heating oil on the coldest days, about 2,000 bucks a day at current oil prices. It's amazing how much fuel and electricity it takes to run an aquarium. You have pumps running 24-7. Um, until a few years ago, we were probably spending a million dollars a year on utilities at the center. In 2008, when oil prices reached record heights, the Sea Life Center knew something had to be done to control their runaway heating costs. Research led them to the seemingly preposterous idea of capturing heat from seawater. If you fell into Resurrection Bay, you would be a victim of hypothermia in a matter of minutes. Could you really heat the Sea Life Center with this frigid water? The mechanical room, that's what we're going to. Enter Andy Baker. So we uh, brought in uh, Andy Baker with your clean energy and uh, uh, did a little study with Andy, and Andy uh, basically determined that it was economically viable to do such a project here. That gave us the ability then to go after funding. As a result of the evaluation by Your Clean Energy, the Sea Life Center was awarded a total of $713,000 in federal and state funding. The center then secured Andy and his team of engineers to design what is now the northernmost seawater heat pump system in the country. We're gonna go into the saltwater pump room. Uh, that's where, where the whole system starts, just in here. The Sea Life Center had two major advantages. First, they already pumped thousands of gallons a minute of seawater into the facility. Second, this guy, John Underwood, the man who controls the maze of pipes in the center's basement. We have a large version over there, but they're actually stacked vertically. He could install the state-of-the-art heat pump equipment, circulation pumps, and long runs of piping. In the dead of winter, the seawater comes into the building at less than 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Its first stop is here, a high volume titanium plate heat exchanger where the seawater flow meets a mixture of water and glycol. So we're chilling the ocean water by about three degrees and we're warming up our glycol loop by up to eight degrees. And this, so this is where we have the heat transfer from the ocean water into the heat pump system. The chilled seawater goes back into the bay, while the glycol mixture goes on to two massive heat pumps. The increased temperatures stolen from the seawater triggers refrigeration chemicals inside the heat pump to vaporize. These are high efficiency. The vapor is compressed, and the energy is used to heat a third loop of water. So this is where the heat pump is removing heat that we got from the seawater. It's happening right here. This is the hot side. So we have a building loop coming in at 100 degrees, but it's getting heated up to 120 degrees when it comes out. So this is where the magic of lifting the heat is happening. The 120 degree water is then pumped through the facility to be used for space heating via rooftop air handlers and for preheating domestic hot water. A lot of people uh, don't know how their, their refrigerator works at home. They don't realize you can't really cool air off but you can draw heat out of something. Once you kind of understand that concept, it's what you do with that heat you just pulled out of, whether it be air or water, that's where the efficiency comes in. Oh, central control. All right, so what do we got? 3.16. Andy Baker is smiling because the number on the operator control screen just topped three. That's the coefficient of performance. The COP. The colder it is, the more, the, the better the system performs. A COP of three means that for every unit of electrical energy used, 
the seawater heat pump system generates three units of heat energy for the building. We see it on the screen now when, when our heat pumps are loaded. We see that actual number and that's a pretty amazing uh, energy statistic that you're getting a 300% return on your, your investment because two-thirds of it's coming from the ocean. That's the secret. I was trained as an engineer um, and so I know that it's possible, but it still doesn't quite make logical sense. Um, it's, it's really amazing um, and really counterintuitive that you can take water that cold and um, pull heat off of it and um, create energy. The Sea Life Center's project puts Alaska on the map for the use of this cutting edge technology in northern latitudes, along with Norway, Sweden, and Canada. And it has only begun. There's a phase two now under design by Your Clean Energy that will send the seawater heat to melt ice on the sidewalks and use cold glycol to capture heat that until this time has been wasted from rooftop exhaust fans. By next winter, they hope to make the center's two oil boilers obsolete, erasing 1.3 million pounds of carbon emissions the boilers generate each year. This is a demonstration project for the state of Alaska. We want to be able to show that perhaps this has application in other parts of the state. The Sea Life Center saved $15,000 a month during the coldest days of winter, saving money and reducing emissions. A win-win. And it's giving folks in Seward a new perspective on their beloved Resurrection Bay. Maybe those waters aren't so cold after all.